Chapter 2 20th Century – The Age of Conflict Part B – Russian Revolution Part 1 – Background The Romanov dynasty ruled Russia for over 350 years from the 16th century until the Russian Revolution in 1917. Tsar was the imperial title of the Russian kings. The title Tsar is derived from the Latin word Caesar, the title of the Roman emperors, which means a person having great power. The Tsar was thought to have been granted the right to rule by the grace of God. The reign of the Russian Tsars began with Ivan the Terrible and ended with Nicholas II. The backward feudal regime of the Tsars resulted in oppressed economic and socialist conditions throughout the country. Russia at the Threshold of Revolution When Tsar Nicholas II began his reign in 1894, Russia was buzzing with ideas of a new government. The educated young generation found Western ideas of constitutional government attractive and decided to fight against the social, economic and political exploitation. Russian authors and thinkers like Alexandria Pushkin, Dostoevsky, Leo Tolstoy, Maxim Gorky and others spread liberalism and humanism through their writings whereas some thinkers opted for revolutionary paths. The nihilist thinkers believed in a society dependent on intellectualism and demanded total freedom from government, religion, marriage and ethics. Karl Marx Karl Marx, author of the famous Das Kapital, was a German communist thinker. He, along with Frederick Engels, collectively published the Communist Manifesto in 1848. He carried out a scientific analysis of the human social development and gave communist doctrines needed for creating a society free from exploitation and inequalities. He believed that human society was dynamic and progressive and it was only human power that could bring about a positive change in the society. According to him, the roots of change lay in the economic system of the society. With a change in the economic system, comes a change in social customs and values. According to his communist philosophy, the society is made up of two classes, the haves, who owned the means of production and the have-nots, who had nothing. Marx believed that the exploitation of the poor people by the social class that holds the means of production resulted in the creation of the two social classes. 
the Tsar and his rich supporters comprised the class haves, while the class have-nots included the workers and the farmers. Karl Marx appealed to the workers and the laborers to bring about a fundamental social change by getting themselves organized. He could thus be considered the intellectual and philosophical leader of the Russian Revolution. Despotic Rule in Russia The Tsars were ruthless and despotic rulers who never appreciated the liberal and progressive ideology of the people. A majority of Russia's population lived in extreme poverty under the absolute rule of the Tsar. The peasants or serfs who worked on the land of the nobles suffered from lack of food, lack of freedom and no hope for improvement. They were unhappy about paying the redemption payments to the state and wanted to own the land they farmed. This resulted in the peasants revolting. Industrial development in Russia was not good enough when compared to other European countries. This limited the number of opportunities available for the workers and peasants. Overcrowded housing with deplorable sanitary conditions, long hours at work, constant risk of injury and death from very poor safety and sanitary conditions, harsh discipline and inadequate wages made the workers discontented. The other minority communities, including the Slav race, faced the same miserable conditions in Russia. Likewise, they too opposed the Tsar's rule. The discontentment of the workers and peasants made them revolt. The trade unions carried out their activities secretly. Various such unions got united under the political banner of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party in 1898. Russia went into a stage of anarchy and turmoil, out of which the Bolshevik Party of Lenin emerged as the dominant political force. Chapter 2 20th Century – The Age of Conflict Part B – Russian Revolution Part 2 – The Bloody Sunday The defeat of Russia in 1904-1905 war against Japan weakened its economy and created an anti-Tsar climate. Thus, the workers, the common people and intellectuals led by Father Gepin organized a peaceful workers' procession to the palace at St. Petersburg on January 22, 1905 to deliver a petition to the Tsar. The unarmed demonstrators were fired upon by the soldiers of the Tsar, resulting in huge bloodshed. The day being a Sunday, this event of January 22, 1905 
in St. Petersburg, Russia has come to be known as the Bloody Sunday. This event triggered huge unrest among the Russians. There were strikes and uprisings all over Russia. Revolt at St. Petersburg In mid-October 1905, the Russian Revolution reached its peak when a general strike swept Russia, which ended when the Tsar issued a manifesto. The leaders of the workers got together at St. Petersburg to set up a central board to direct the workers and create a unanimous agitation. This was known as the St. Petersburg Revolt. In an effort to knock down the heat of the revolution, the Tsar issued the October Manifesto, written by the Tsar's First Minister, Sergei Witt. The Manifesto promised to grant fundamental rights, the right to vote, to hold national elections and special rights to the National Legislative Council. Duma dissolved. In order to fulfill the demands of the people to establish a democratic government, the first Duma or the Russian parliament was elected in 1906. It was soon dissolved as the decisions taken by the Duma were not acceptable to the Tsar. The second Duma that was set up after re-election was dissolved too by the Tsar on grounds of differences with its members. The third Duma that was elected was a puppet in the hands of the Tsar and hence it was unable to do anything noteworthy. Thus, the democratic experiment in Russia failed miserably, leading to the revolution. The Rasputin Factor Rasputin, a corrupt Siberian monk, was a close advisor to Tsarina Alexandra. During the war period, the Tsar too followed his advice related to the matters of the court. Rasputin also supervised the key appointments at the court. All these angered the courtiers and they killed him. Course of Revolution the anti tsar revolution by the workers and the soldiers during January and February 1917 forced the Tsar to dethrone on March 15, 1917. Immediately, a provisional government represented by landowners, capitalists, industrialists and businessmen was formed by the moderate leaders. Kerensky, the leader of the moderate Menshevik group, led the government. This government continued the First World War against Germany, but soon fell short of the arms and ammunition. The common man lost confidence in the provisional government. In the meantime, conflicts began between the Menshevik leader Kerensky and the Bolshevik leader Lenin. 
Lenin was under exile in Switzerland and had returned to Russia in April 1917. Finally, on November 7, 1917, the Bolsheviks suspended the Kerensky government and this marked the end of the Russian Revolution. Chapter 2 20th Century The Age of Conflict Part B Russian Revolution Part 3 Lenin's Contribution Vladimir Lenin masterminded the Bolshevik takeover of power in Russia in 1917 and was the founder of the first communist government in the world. He was highly influenced by the Marxist philosophy. He strongly believed that there could be no progress in the country unless feudalism, land slavery and the despotic rule of the Tsar were completely destroyed. His major contribution was the termination of capitalism in business and industries. Thus, private property was confiscated and business and industries were nationalized. Land was redistributed equally among people. Various industries were sponsored and run by the government. He believed that the government must have domination of the working class. He ensured that the working class received accommodation, food, clothing and other facilities instead of wages in money. This led to the formation of a communist government in Russia. Lenin's New Economic Policy, that is, NEP. The new economic policy announced by Lenin consisted of both privatization and nationalism. The private industries were allowed to buy and sell their products in the open market to a limited extent only. The government controlled entire transportation and external trade. Important principles of this new economic policy were A. Collective farming B. Open market C. New currency D. Small and large-scale industries It resulted in a major increase in the agricultural production as a large area of land came under cultivation. The industrial production gained impetus and incentives equally. Significance of Russian Revolution The Russian Revolution, inspired by the philosophy of Karl Marx, holds a significant place in the history of the modern world. It ushered in a new era of fundamental changes in the political, social, economic, cultural and scientific fields of Russia. It gave birth to new values and set up the principles of equality, cooperation and global fraternity. Emancipation of man from all kinds of bondages 
was the most significant message conveyed by the revolution. The Russian Revolution popularized the concept of welfare class that attempted the creation of a social order independent of religion, class and exploitation. As a result, the working class acquired great importance. Russia led the nations of the Eastern Hemisphere and became a strong rival to America.